overlapping chaos, overlapping emergencies, overlapping crises. We are there. And when we're there, I think that that's what's going to show us it's too late to help get away from hard times. I believe we're going to see hard times. Now, do we know what those hard times will be? Will it be a black swan event? Will it be another uh, lockdown? Will it be another, um, you know, war breakout? We don't know. But that's the point of preparedness. We take care of ourselves so we can be more sustainable, more independent. We're going to discuss three things, three reasons why you must take care of yourself because these three will help you be either more independent or completely dependent on a system that wants to control you. They want you to be controlled. And to be honest with you, when they have you under their thumb, you know, when you're under their thumb, then they can do what they want, when they want, and how they want without any pushback. Because what are you going to say when you're fully dependent on them? Now let's discuss these things. These are warning signs for harder times. And I believe that we can't stop it. No matter who gets elected, I don't think we're going to stop the train from going off the cliff. But I do believe it helps us be more prepared to be able to sustain what's going to happen. Let's dive in. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. If you are new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, that's okay, but let us know what you think about the content of today's video. We humbly ask if you do like it, give us a thumbs up. It means the world to us and it helps us spread our message across this platform. Now, the purpose of this video today is to talk about the fact that I do believe we'll see harder times. We're already seeing it. I think back to the fact that the Hezbollah now situation, Lebanon and Israel, then all of a sudden Russia, Ukraine, this is kind of getting some more traction. We see the fact, of course, North Korea, China, there's a lot going on. And then on top of that, you see the fact that our, our Republican platform is kind of loose and, and seems a little bit more centrist than true conservatism. The Democratic platform is falling to pieces and imploding because they don't even know who their elected official is going to be and the nominee going into presidency there's a lot going on and when america looks weaker it, it means a lot more is going on well today we're going to discuss that the warning signs are there the fact of what some of these policies are there uh, and the consequences of those policies are going to make you either more dependent or make you think i may need to take this preparedness serious i may need to do these three things so therefore i'm ready for those times as I said in the intro, I don't believe that we're going to just all of a sudden get better times and everything's going to be a kumbaya moment. I believe no matter who is going to win, we're going to face adversity and hard times. It may be financial. It may be war. It may be more other chaos that we don't see. It could be natural disasters, whatever it may be. I think we're there. Now, let's talk about why I say that and then what I'm doing to make sure that I'm hedging myself against it. Number one, the food supply. A new report warns that the world entered a stage of overlapping emergencies when it indicates the new destabilization of our food system. The food system is struggling because we're losing the fact of either growing the food, having the food, or areas being in conflict where they can't provide their own food, so therefore they're taking it from the world in different areas between the weather between the conflicts between the fact that people want someone else to provide it for them we have now lost the fact of our food system being strong not only that we've lost the fact of growing certain seeds they've taken them off markets not only that we've learned to only grow with fertilizers and chemicals and learn industrial styles farming versus actually being able to grow your own food now, don't tell me, oh, I'm a hunter, I can make it. Oh, don't tell me I'm a fisherman, I can make it. I have a pond, I have a lake, I have a creek, I have a lot of acres. Studies show that the wildlife populations have dropped drastically. From, of course, man moving in and causing less places for wildlife to go. Also, the fact of weather, that does play into it. But not only that. The fact that they're not being replaced because there's not good management of it. The point of quality deer management or the point of fishing out certain fishes is to make sure that we're building a great ecosystem and also harvesting what we need and then leaving others for later. 
Well, then we go into areas and we hunt them crazily and then all of a sudden the population is gone. There's been diseases in certain areas because no one's allowed to hunt it to help make sure that we go through this typical stages of life. So therefore it's caused problems with wildlife. So there's not enough to just say, okay, we're gonna go hunt and fish and we'll still be independent. We have to realize that the food system of today is not strong enough to cover everybody's needs of today. So what does that mean? We need food systems from yesterday, from last year, from two years ago, from four years ago. Well, how do we have old food that we can still eat today? It's preservation. It's learning how to make sure you're storing food. Because look at the numbers. There is not enough food on the earth, in the earth right now, to feed the populations without having some kind of either processed garbage food or having someone being able to put the food up. So we're seeing the problem of feeding not only America, feeding the world because we've put ourselves in a very precarious situation. Not only that, have you thought about growing food? If I can grow heirloom seeds, Don Jimbo, and they have passed down to families, passed through to each person, they're building a resistance and they're able to grow in a lot of different atmospheres and ecosystems and also it's built to last striving we've built a phenomenal family seed therefore it grows no matter if it has you know quote unquote bad fertilization good fertilization it kind of has built resistance against some of the, the the problems that it would face and if we're not able to get the natural fertilizers like our animals regenerative ag we have to depend on chemicals. Well, if all of a sudden those chemicals are not available or they're too expensive, you're not growing food, especially when they're new seed and they're modified seed. So what do we do? What do we do? So the food system's broken. Overlapping emergencies has caused for the stress of the food system. Most countries are getting worried about this. Norway just put up 82,000 tons of state-owned grains and they, they're keeping them from uh, going bad. They're trying to keep them safe. There's also at the very North Pole, uh, there is a seed vault there. There's seed vaults all over. Guess what? There was a seed vault in Afghanistan. Well, they're saying that it may have not made it through all the chaos and problems that the Middle East has had. So when we start seeing these countries stockpile, what does that mean? When countries are saying stockpile, you know, FEMA came out just a few weeks and months ago through all these storms. They're saying there's nothing wrong with having a friendly respect to putting up some food. When our emergency management is warning us to make sure we have some food, there could be something that we need to pay attention to. Now, what do we come to the solution of the first problem? We have a broken food system. We rely too much on everybody else to provide it for us and we provide newer seeds, not the old heirloom seeds. So what is our goals? Okay, we need to buy food for sure. Well, the cost of groceries is high so people can't buy as much food as they used to. Buy a little at a time. Patience is a virtue. It's like when you build up your, your mutual funds or your retirement, you're not putting it all in at one time. You're doing it over a 30 or 40 year process. Well, we take the same approach to food. For about 15 years now, I've been preparing. I've been learning how to do better when it comes to preparedness and food, making sure that we're putting up food that's not only gonna last one year, two years, five years, seven years. We wanna make sure that we're putting it up for a long time. So we start learning how to buy a little at a time. Let the the pantries grow. Not only am I trying to buy the food, I'm trying to grow the food. I want to learn how to do regenerative practices, not with new seed. I want to learn how to buy the old ancient grains, the old ancient seeds to make sure that I'm providing for myself. I want to make sure that I'm not depending on just deer and fish and in wildlife. I want to depend on the animals I can grow so I learn animal husbandry. Now I say all this and then you may say, I live in the city. I can't do all that. Well, sometimes extreme circumstances makes us make decisions to better uh, prepare ourselves to be more independent. Have you ever thought about moving? And people say, oh, I can't do that. During 2020, that was the biggest migration of people from cities to rural areas because they wanted to get out of these liberal um, control zones and they wanted to be more safe and they felt safer, especially when it comes to living in the rural areas and how they may can be able to start raising their own food. A study shows there's only five to 10% of people that are considered prepared for these kind of things and have enough food for their families. Five or 10%. So what do we do when everybody else is depending on other people to provide it? 
Well, you know who shipped a lot of those seeds and who bought a lot of those seeds and who bought a lot of that farmland? Well, he tends to be a tech billionaire that's telling you that cows are bad too. He owns the rights to a lot of that. So you better start learning how to put up food because if countries like Norway and India and in China are stockpiling foods, don't you think it's maybe wise that we do the same? Number two, Australia, UK, um, even most liberal states and cities, you can't have the rights to own something that looks like that. Now, the reason I can't say it is because I will be completely taken off. But the importance of self-defense and making sure you have the, the things that you're needing because of the freedoms of the Second Amendment, I think that you need to be paying attention to. Murthy, which is the Surgeon General, has nothing to really do with self-defense and um, you keeping your family safe by defending and also being able to utilize them to hunt to gather. Murthy said, Ownership of firearms is a complete and utter disease. It says since 96, the push of the left has been to seize the property of your firearm rights. To, to, to really withhold that. Now there's been major pushback and we've been very successful to hold on to, to a certain extent in most areas. But a little at a time, a little at a time, you're seeing the movement of your rights being taken away to defend your home, to defend yourself. Again, let's go back to Australia. Let's go back to uh, UK. Let's go back to France. You don't have those rights over there. And therefore you see the chaos that you're seeing now and it spreads like, it spreads like a disease because no one can control it and all they have is a few you know, batons and, and pieces of wood where they never can control and never can hold steadfast. Um, you know, maybe their government, maybe other people away from breaking in their homes. I, I'll be honest with you, not that I don't have a Louisville slugger sitting behind the door there, I, but that's not my first line of defense. So I, ch I challenge you, pay attention. This administration, the Biden administration, has taken a ton of your rights away. Now, it's already said that two of the justices, which is the two oldest justices, is, is conservative justices now, serving on Supreme Court. So the next president could likely replace those two justices. Well. If a Democrat is in charge, those two justices, which are complete and utter supporters of 2A rights, they may be removed for people who don't feel that way at all. It would throw the court completely against 2A rights. And the Surgeon General, he has been pushing this. And also a lot of the other cabinet of Biden has pushed the fact that they want to take the rights away from a lot of your availability to hold and have the rights to carry firearms. Now you think about that. If I can have the food and I can have the land, but I have no way to defend it, then is it my food and my land? If I have the way to raise my family and have the way to lock my door, but if someone breaks in, all I have is a pipe or all I have is a bat, is that my best line of defense? No, but then we depend on the government. Look at the cities. The cities right now, you fully depend on government to provide every need. They are your first responders because you have no means to take care of yourself. Because most cities have strict policies where it's almost impossible for you to be a carrier of a firearm. So are we allowing it to happen? Yes, we're allowing it to happen. The question is, are we doing anything to stop it? I think it's around 45% of all firearms are in America for the whole world, meaning we have the rights right now because most of the world does not. But slowly and surely, we're allowing more global policies to come into America, and therefore they're taking those rights away. Don't look to the conservative lawmakers to help you and make sure that you're safe. They have reneged and backed down on just about every situation that they've been put in to where they negotiate. We always lose our rights. I think of all the things like nuclear families to Roe to all these situations where the conservatives just back down and then do whatever the liberals tell them to do. So don't believe they're always going to hold on to your rights to keep and bear arms. Make sure that you are putting up a healthy stockpile of certain brass, of certain pew pews, and make sure that you're doing all that you can to keep them safe and they're put in inconspicuous places that you've done it right and that you have good training. But part of, of the warning signs that we're seeing that this happening in all over the country, all over the world, is because 
good people can't not defend their self. And when good people cannot defend their self, then they are a, going to fall to the bad person. And also they're gonna to look to the government to save them and the government is not there to save you. You wish they were, but they're not. So I want my first response to be, I wanna take care of my family and myself. Then hopefully government will come in. Police will come in, first response will come in. But if I have no form of defense, then I'm just a sitting duck waiting for someone to take everything that I've worked so hard to get. Number two, pay attention to two a rights because they are with a vengeance pushing against you, especially in America. And number three is currency. As political parties fall, the fact of gold and silver rises. The fact of alternative currencies rise. Now, I tell you all the time, you need to be stockpiling cash. I believe that cash is still king. I believe that the pers the problem is people are not using cash as much. We need to get away from the fact of using credit cards to pay an extra two or 3% and start using cash again. That would definitely help. But ultimately, spending by our government, spending by consumers, and spending by this world is going to crash most of our currencies. We see it in real time. It's happening in real time. Just because we can print a certain amount of money for the Fed to print, to borrow against, to then turn around and print again, to then set inflation against, that hurts my head to think about. Because to be honest with you, it's all a farce. Once we start seeing countries struggle and their markets fall, then therefore you're gonna realize how much of a balloon we have been on to where all it takes is one little needle to pop it out from under us and then we are gone. You know what? Gold and silver has been threadbare. Now I'm not saying invest your whole life into gold and silver. What I'm saying is this, we cannot depend on putting our money just in a bank. We cannot depend on just putting our money in retirements because that's what they've always told us to do. We cannot depend on just buying cars and buying stuff that just goes into a liability and not an asset because they lose value. We have to learn to break away from the American the American way, the traditional way they've taught us with money and start going back to the things that made the world run. It's a barnable situation. It's gold and silver. It's things that bring assets. Do you know salt at one time, which is food, is a curing agent. You know at one time it was considered worth more than gold. Think of your property. If you have the property, you can then grow the food. It's an asset. Think about the antiquities that have already gained value back and now they're just sitting there and they're just gaining value. You can put your worth there. Now people say, oh, well, I can't take a dresser. I can't take gold. I can't, buy, can't take silver and then just go buy bread. No, you can't. I understand that. But if money is worthless, you can't do it either. It may take you a million of those dollar bills or a million digital currencies to then go buy bread. It's the same thing. That's a speculative argument that means nothing. You have to find what brings wealth to people. That's, of course, food like we talked about. Of course, barterable assets and making sure you defend them like we talked about in point two. But think about it. Why are countries stockpiling gold? China is stockpiling gold. India is stockpiling gold. Poland is stockpiling gold. Your own Fed, who prints your dollar bills, who says that your money is safe, is stockpiling gold. They put up more tons of gold this year than they've ever had. So why would they tell you to not buy gold and silver when they're buying gold and silver? So the smart thing is to say, okay, if I want independence, I have to find things to invest in that mean something more than just a speculative paper, speculative crypto, or, or just putting it in a bank or in the spot market for it to falter or be a bell in for someone else to utilize my money. So therefore, I've got to find value in something else. So then we start investing in other things. Gold and silver, I love. I bought a ton of other assets that we don't talk about much, but we have tons of stockpile videos on those things because they become barterable. They become something worth an asset. We have several vehicles that are older uh, without computerized technology and all they are is just literally mechanical, old structured vehicles. So we can use them no matter what. We have stockpiled fuel and alternative resources when it comes to energy. That's where we find worth. Because when our dollar and our yen and our, our rupees and our rubles and all that fails, we then go to a different currency that BRICS is trying and that our government's trying to work digitized currency, a speculative digitized way that they own the rights to your money. And all you do is have access to your money. You don't actually own your money. 
So I challenge you, look at gold and silver. Look at other assets that could bring value to your family. I want to make sure that I have something worth value. Now, am I buying bread with gold? No. But at one point in time, there may be an exchange in the near future that I may have to say, okay, I've got gold. Whatever the currency is at that time or whatever I need at that time, I've got two ounces of gold. I've got 15 ounces of gold. I've got 20 ounces of gold. I've got 10 ounces of silver. It's You build wealth there. So when people say, oh, gold and silver, you can't use it. Well, that's like saying I'm going to turn around and put a million dollars buried in a container in 100 years from now when that currency is no good, we're going to try to use it. You can't, but gold and silver, you can. It's been around for thousands of years. So let's find some value in something that's lasted longer than 100 years worth of currency or 50 years worth of currency. We have to look at other options. Now, the reason I say at the start of this video that we're going to face hard times, every market, every global market is struggling right now. The numbers look good, so people are making money, but at any point in time, one little incident could cause a massive depression because our dollars and our debts are not sustainable. The fact that the push against the, the second one that we talked about, the fact that if you can't defend yourself, then you're looking completely on them to depend on you to be safe. The first one, if you have no food, then you're gonna be in the bread lines just like everybody else, begging for someone to give you food. And then that, that reminds you of biblical times where you've got to get some kind of mark, some kind of uh, sacrifice you've got to make because you're so hungry, you're willing to do all you can to provide for your family. That's how you will justify it. To keep my family safe, I've got to allow them to do this. To feed my family, I've got to allow them to do this. To make sure, I, because I don't have any money, I didn't put anything up, I've got to go into the, D, the you know the CBDC or I've got to go into some kind of digitized currency. And if they tell me I can't buy this meat because it's against climate policies, I've just got to live with it because I have no other form of doing it. So I'm going to allow my kids to eat this soy-based GMO garbage. I know that sounds preposterous but it's actually happening right before your eyes in tons of areas and it's coming to a city and a town and a state near you. We have to look at the fact of, I want to protect my family. Okay, then how do we do that? I want to be independent. Okay, well then how do we do that? I want to not deal with the fact of how crazy our cities are. Okay, so if we say that, then we need to move out. I want to make sure that I'm not just putting all my savings in 401ks and dollars. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to buy this and, and have gold and silver. We, have to, we talk about problems, but we also have to have solutions. You better start stockpiling food and needs of food. Honey, liquor, salt, sugar, all those things don't go bad. They're shelf stable. They last forever. Rice, oats. You know those commodities were valued on true assets. They were money years ago. Money. We had to have food, so food became money. So that's two, that's, that's two birds with one stone there. You can put up food and you're also putting up food, barbable assets, and money, and then you better find a way to defend it. I bring this up because I'm, I'm, I'm pleading with you to make wise decisions to be more independent. I don't want just five or 10% of people being able to take care of their family. I want 50 to 60 to 70% to be able to take care of their family. We say that we can, but when it comes down to it, can you? There's things that I'm still weak in, so I'm learning how to be better in. So I challenge you to do the same. Three things that you need to control. Food, defending of your food, defending of your home, defending of your family, and keeping financial independence. And that means buying certain things and putting them up and finding out what brings value to the world. What brings value that's been around for the thousands of years. That is how you get independent that's how you have true preparedness and that's how you take care of your family guys let me know your thoughts and then we can talk about it in the comments uh, if you have other suggestions let us know but when you when you're nailing down those three things you're going to be okay no matter what hard times come you will be okay more than anything find wisdom and seek wisdom in christ he will lead you in the best way possible and also when we go through tumultuous times and turmoil and crises there's no better way than to look up and know that that God is there. God bless. Be free. Be free.